Richie. And it beyond Walker. Pugh. Pugh! That'll do it! That will do it! Pugh for Bournemouth! The roof of the gold sands is raised! Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football Welcome to the latest in the interview series on the Back of the Net podcast, where we are very pleased to bring you yet another chat with a player who, despite the relatively short time at the club, is synonymous with our success. His goals, his setups were a huge part of our championship winning campaign. Before we introduce him, once again, if you enjoy the video, please do subscribe. And why not consider giving this video a thumbs up too? We'd really appreciate it as it signals your intent that you'd like more of this kind of content, as would we. So, on to today's guest. This player joined us halfway through our first championship season, enabling us to finish in a solid 10th spot. But in his first full season, he scored 17 goals, assisted many, many more, and went on to help us lift the trophy at his former club, as AFC Bournemouth won the title on the final day of the season. It is, of course, the one, the only, Jan Kermigant. Jan, how are you? Hello. I'm really good. Thank you. Yourself? Excellent. Yeah, very good. Thank you. And also today, we've got Neil Dawson with us. Neil, you're looking forward to finally watching football again rather than just talking about it? I think so. I want to see what it's like with no crowds in the stadiums, though. It might be a bit weird, but we will see. But no, it'd be good to get going. Good to get yeah. going. Football, not as we know it, I think. But uh, anyway, and also we have Craig Beasley. Craig, who was on our fan panel last week. How are you? You all right? Yeah, very well. Thank you, Jeff. Evening, Neil. Evening, Jan. Evening, all. Good evening. So, right, Jan, we've got a, a, a whole set of questions for you here, which some of them have been put to us by Bournemouth fans. Some of us are, uh, some of them are our own creation. Uh, the first one I was really intrigued to, to know, the name. It's not typically French. Where on earth does Jan Kermigan come from? Uh, it's uh, typically from where I live in Brittany. So basically in France, when you say my name, you can almost, you know, uh, guess where I come from. And did, uh, when, you, when you were growing up, Jan, did you, uh, did you always want to be a professional football player or were you good at other sports or was it football all the way for you? That was football all the way. Yeah, I've always been with the ball uh, in the garden or... Or, you know, where my parents used to live, uh, they still live there. Uh, basically, my, my mom was pregnant of me uh, in, in the new house. And I always lived there. And uh, there was like a garden in front of the house. And outside, there was like a big land uh, where the, um, uh, with other, you know, houses. And uh, the, the parents decided to, to build like a, a wood goal. Mm -hmm. And I've played there for many, many, <laughs> many, many days and uh, always every day every day with the ball and yeah it's been uh, in my head for forever when you say with your feet were you also very good with your head as a kid uh as a kid i don't i, I don't know but uh, the thing is i always uh uh you know like put everything i can so if the ball comes to the head uh, i try to yeah to, to do my best and, and use my head as well because it's a part of football so craig you you had a question from matthew didn't you uh, yeah, so Jan, uh, who was your childhood uh, footballing hero? Ah, uh, the player. I was uh, I was a big fan of uh, Jean Pierre Papin from uh, Marseille, typical goal, goal scorer, and I was uh, quite a big fan of Marseille at this time. Okay, and Al Gard, who is an AFC Bournemouth fan who actually lives in Brittany, asked us which team do you support in Brittany? Uh, I don't really support. Um, I would not say I support one team. Uh, uh, I have had uh, some time, you know, as I say, when I was younger, I was uh, a big fan of Marseille because I love the team. We uh, used to play this time. Uh, I've loved uh, Manchester United when uh, Eric Cantona was there as well. Uh, I was quite a big fan as well of Mil Milan, AC Milan, uh, at the best. But I, I, I couldn't say I had one uh, one team I support for, you know, forever. Just I love football and. I would not say I'm the only one team fan. And in the area where you come from, in Brittany, do you support any particular team? Um, I, I could say a little bit uh, Rennes, Stade Rennes. 
because uh, I played there for a few months before to 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 have to stop football with my leukemia. So because I played there, f- yeah, a few months, uh, I was uh, I'm a little bit more aware of the results and uh, follow them a little bit more. I would say, like in Brittany, we are quite uh, proud uh, to be from Brittany. So I would say every team, you know, every professional team in Brittany, uh, we, I, I, I can support it. Yeah. Oh, good. You mentioned your leukemia, Jan. So I think you were 14 when you were diagnosed. How did the illness affect you and your football uh, football as a, as a youngster? Uh, of course, it was a big, uh, a big blow, and and for me, uh, football was like a, a secondary. I would say it was uh, more important to to be in good health and and uh, and uh, get better. So I put the football a bit outside for for a few, normally a few years, and uh, it ended up uh, yeah being a bit more than uh, expected because after I've been told uh, I could not play uh, football again. Uh, so I think I was yeah something difficult for me, but at the end I think I've used uh, uh, that negative part of my life I would say to to use it as a strength and get uh, even more uh, mentally strong I would say mm-hmm. and never you know give up and give everything on the pitch. Craig, um, so when you were at the Cherries, uh, you formed a close bond with Felix Brown, um, who was in the same position as you, Jan. Um, you spoke to him on the phone regularly. Um, what encouraging words could you give him from your experience? Uh, as I said, you, you, for me, I had a, a sentence I, I quite like. It's uh, uh, when you get, uh, or, as long as you get hope, you get life. I don't know if you said that in, in English, but I mean, uh, yeah, just never give up and... Uh, and believe it can be, we can get more, you know, good times. You've always struck every Cherries fan as, as a really intelligent player. I mean, you were, you were a complete footballer in, in, in our view. You had an amazing touch, great shot, great heading ability, vision to pass the ball and, and, and timing that was unbelievable. Which of the skills came most naturally to you and um, which required you to practice most to improve do you think do you think mm, i don't know it's a difficult question to be fair uh i think the 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 way you play your the way you play football and uh, the way you see the game is maybe something more natural so some players maybe get that vision and uh, others are more focused on you know maybe goals or, or stuff like that but i've always uh, been uh, i always liked you know to to share, uh, that's why I play football. To be fair, and uh, to you know, to make passes and and uh, score goals as well. But it w- it's never been uh, like uh, the most important thing. I would say it's more to try to play uh, the best way I can to help the team before than thinking, yeah, I, I need to score goals because I'm a striker or or thing like that. So I think uh, the way I play is more trying to be good for my teammates and help them to get better and as a team. Mm. If you Dad, know when, what I mean. We yeah. do. Yeah, well, we, we could see it when, when you played. We could see all of that. When you first came uh, to England, you came to Leicester City. Had you been to England before? Um, and how was it? How, did, how hard did you find it to settle in and adjust? Uh, no, I think that was, uh, that was the first time I, I went to England. Uh, when I signed for Leicester, uh, at the beginning, to be fair, it was like a yeah big adventure, new challenge, and uh, I was looking forward to uh, you know to play in a, in a new championship and uh, with a different culture. And and uh, the the first memory I have from from Leicester, to be fair, is the uh, atmosphere at the stadium with the fans. Mm-hmm. That was huge, comparing to uh, second division in France. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, straight away like. Um, happy to you know of my choice to to play in England and I felt like uh, yeah that was that's why uh, I've signed in England for for that kind of uh, you know games and atmosphere uh, but after the problem for me was like uh, being involved you know and and feeling you know int- integrated with the with the, the team mm. uh, because I didn't speak well English and and uh, they didn't didn't really try to get me involved as well so it was a little bit like a you are here, but they don't really want you to be here. So 
it was oh. a bit difficult, but you learn from that as well, and uh, and you try to to take that uh, into your positives and and uh, that help you after in your life. Mm. So what do you think that was, Jan? Do you think it was down to the coaching staff, or were the players just not a very welcoming bunch of teammates? Uh, f I think first of all it was the players because, uh, as you know, in the team uh, and especially when I signed for Leicester, they, they, they were promoted from League One, so they already had a group like very, uh, like a big, you know, togetherness, and uh, most of them knew each other, and uh, even the new players they came from uh, English leagues, so they all had uh, friends in the team or, or people they knew. And me it was like uh, I was alone; nobody knew me, and I was French. Uh, and of course, it was difficult to arrive here, try to train well, which I did. Uh, I was really good at training, to be fair, and, and gave everything. And uh, I think maybe some players felt like uh, I could take a place of uh, one of their friends, especially you know uh, at this time the striker was a big, big friend, a big friend of uh, the captain. And I think that didn't help me to yeah to get a chance and to be uh, welcomed by by the players. And after mm -hmm. that. Because there was two, you know, imp important player and uh, and with experience, uh, I think the rest of the team felt a little bit in the same mood. And finally, I, I had just uh, two or three guys who tried to speak to me a little bit, but not much. This might bring back some difficult memories, Jan. Uh, but there was a player final um, where your confidence from the penalty spot. Um, ultimately led to a miss which prevented your side from getting promoted to the Premier League. Um, is a ch the chip down the middle a technique that you'd perhaps advise um, players coming through against doing now? It was a, a, a yeah, difficult de decision for me because, uh, as I just told you, you know, I was not really uh, involved, but uh, the confidence was really low. And uh, when the penalty, penalty shoot had just uh, arrived, uh, I just played maybe 10 minutes in the, in the end of the game uh, just to help the team, you know, for the long balls and stuff like that. And uh, when uh, we had to take uh, responsibilities for, for the penalty, uh, basically there was like three players maybe uh, who decided to, to take it and take the responsibility. And after the rest were more, I think they didn't really want to take it. So me as a striker, I had to, I would say, take the risk and uh, assume uh, so the manager asked me if I wanted. Uh, I think he was uh, hoping I would say yes, which I did. Uh, but of course, when uh, I was the fourth uh, um, uh, taker, penalty taker, and they all scored before me, so the pressure was on me uh, like massively. <laughs> and, uh, and I knew if I missed, I would be the scapegoat, you know, because I was already uh, uh, not really involved. So I think it would be easy to to say that's your fault. So. It doesn't change my mind in terms of uh, the, the the technique of the penalty because I did that before and uh, and I had success as well. But uh, I was more like uh, not confident about smashing the ball on my left, which I normally do, because I was thinking if I do that, I might maybe uh, not hit the target and uh, miss the, the miss the the, the, the goal. Mm -hmm. So I decided to chip in the middle because the, um, the keeper dived like in the first three uh, shots. Uh, he, he, he gambled, you know, like uh, I take one side and I, I, and I dive. So I was thinking if you just chip in the middle, it should be a goal because at least you hit the target. And uh, mm -hmm. But I think he, he, he maybe saw something in my, um, the way I, you know, I, I walked to the ball or something. I was uh, uh, maybe aiming to do something uh, <laughs> crazy. And uh, at the end, you could see he didn't really dive, you know, he just uh, put a knee on, on, the, on the floor and and uh, stayed a bit in the middle, so he said the the, yeah, the pen. But it was not the best one, to be fair. Yeah, as I said, I was uh, my confidence was very low, and even the chip was not good. It happens. It happens. And then you went back to France, and then you came back to uh, England with Charlton Athletic. Who the manager Chris Powell? I think he was a coach at Leicester, um, so he would have remembered you, and he must have liked you and brought you back. What was it? What was he like to work for, Chris Powell? Um, that was, a, yeah, for me, you know, after Leicester, uh, of course, it was a, a big disappointment for me because I knew it was a, uh, a football, you know, I would be good good for. But the, the, the fact is uh, my season was difficult and uh, 
ended up like uh, really badly. So I had to maybe go somewhere else and uh, have another season uh, maybe back in France. But after that, I came back to Leicester, to be honest, and um, the the manager was uh, not, not not the same. It was new manager, new owner. Uh, so I was thinking, why not? You know, having a new chance. Uh, of course, some players change as well. So I was thinking, it's like a new depart. You can try if he something. You know, it's if he's going well at the beginning of preseason. Why not? Which uh, which happened at the beginning, and at some point, I don't know why. I think some. Uh, some people from the previous uh, staff were still there, and uh, I think they were really angry uh, <laughs> towards me. And uh, and I think they, they they spoke to the manager, like uh, maybe saying it would be difficult for for me with the fans. I don't know, but at some point uh, I didn't play a game in in preseason two, which was uh, weird for me because uh, I did nothing wrong. Uh, and when I came back, I had a friend who was already uh, due to depart to leave the club. And he was already training with the youth team, and uh, that's him who told me, like, now you you train with me with the youth team, not even someone from the staff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so that's over for me. <laughs> and uh, after they tried to, uh, I would say, get me out. You know, I, I had one year left, so I just to train and be, try to be a professional with the youth team, which I did, and I finally uh, resigned on the last day of maybe uh, August. Uh, and of course, I was in, uh, in chat with uh, uh, with uh, Chris Powell, and I, I really like him as the player. Even uh, if we don't, didn't really speak too much at, at Leicester, but I felt he was a, a great guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he signed for Charlton, it was a big uh, um, yeah. Of course, it was a big impact for me to take that decision to come back and sign for Charlton, especially in uh, League One. Mm -hmm. which I didn't, didn't really want uh, at first, but I felt like uh, it might be a good revenge to come back. And, and at least him, he saw me at training and he knows my my abilities. And uh, maybe this time I will get a, a proper chance to, to play. And you did as well. Uh, uh, there were two teams that you seem to have particularly good games against. Every time you played Leicester, you seem to score and win. And then uh, you also played well and scored a few times against <laughs> So, what was it about Bournemouth that you enjoyed and motivated you to score lots of goals? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I remember I scored. I scored twice, I think, uh, against Bournemouth. Uh, yeah, I don't know. To be fair, but when I came back, uh, it was the same. When I came back, uh, I think a few years later, with the uh, it was the same with the reading when I played against Charlton. I scored two. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've scored a few against my uh, pre previous club or future club. You scored a, a few against Leicester as well. That must have been good. Yeah, that was funny because, uh, funny, I don't know, but uh, I think I played three times with uh, Charlton against Leicester and, and uh, scored always one and we <laughs> won 2 1 every time. So that was uh, a yeah, good spe special uh, dedication for me. <laughs> Do you think it was because um, of your goals against us, um, how Eddie actually noticed you? I don't know. I think, uh, no, no, I can't say just one goal or, or two uh, make the difference. I think uh, I would say uh, you, you have to give him more credit when he take a, <laughs> he take a player. <laughs> I think he, he's the one to, uh, to study every detail of a player to, to make sure he's the one he, he really needs. And uh, and the funny thing with me, he, he told me when we uh, we met uh, for the first time. Uh, so he explained to me basically the the way you know the philosophy, his philosophy and the way he wanted to play. And he said to me, "I'm normally uh, don't you know don't take players above thirties. It's not uh, the kind of player I want to bring. But I'm sure you could be the the last piece of, of the jigsaw, and we could get uh, better with you." So. Uh, we spoke about that a bit later as well. <laughs> and he said to me, you've been uh, just uh, the player I needed. And it must have been really hard to leave Charlton because, I mean, I know a couple of Charlton fans now and uh, when I said to them, oh, I'm talking to Jan this week, they were like, oh, he's my hero still. Um, <laughs> uh, wh why, why do you think you, you yeah. seem to have that special bond with Charlton fans? Um. I don't know. I think uh, the, 
I think it could be the same ev everywhere. What wants uh, want to see the fans uh, with their players is to make sure they give everything. Uh, after they can forgive you if you had a, a bad game, but at least if you if you give your your best and you respect the shirt and the club uh, and the fans, of course, uh, I think that the main uh, the main thing and the most important uh, for me as a player is uh, to give uh, everything. And you can't, you know, cheat and uh, just uh, uh, think about yourself. You have to be, yeah, respectful for uh, what you represent. Uh, because even for the, you know, the kids are looking at you. You are. It's important to to show something, uh, something good. And and I think that's why the the the, the fans are, are like me as a player. Did it worry you uh, when you came that we were a smaller club? We, we are, well, we are. We're still a smaller club than Charlton. Did that worry you? Uh, not really, to be fair. But of course, uh, as we just said before, when I left uh, Charlton, it was uh, for me a big, big. Uh, uh, it was heartbreaking because I, I wanted to almost maybe finish my career at Charlton, uh, at Charlton because I found exactly what I wanted to. Uh, to find and uh, and I felt so good in the club with uh, every everybody at the club. Uh, of course, the fans. Uh, I love the stadium, um, the manager. Uh, I had a, yeah everything good good uh, a good group as well. So yeah, I was I was just happy you know to to play in, the, in that club. Uh, but unfortunately, when we needed a little bit of uh, investment. Uh, and bringing some new players after the season in championship to where we finished not far. It's quite similar to to Bournemouth, to be fair. When uh, when we got promoted to the chart, and we I think uh, we finished the season like uh, close to the to the playoffs, not too far, like ninth. Mm -hmm. And uh, and basically, I felt that season like we should keep the. Uh, the best player, I would say, and maybe add uh, a few good ones to maybe push for uh, playoff, you know, uh, spot, which didn't happen, and that was a big uh, disappointment as well because I felt like we had something to achieve, something good, but just uh, we we missed uh, investment from the from the club, and uh, and I can compare to Bournemouth when I when I, I signed. Same, we could see like uh, we had something good, maybe, and we could achieve something good, but we needed maybe the two or three or four players to get the proper squad and uh, with quality and uh, and to have a chance to yeah, to, to reach uh, the playoff or, or even more. Mm -hmm. And you had to wait until March that year to make your debut. Uh, with ourselves. <laughs> Was you frustrated it, it took so long, Jan? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I have to, I have to, I, I, I have to be honest. Uh, when I wait, when I signed, it was in January. I think the the, uh, the the team was not doing too well, you know, in terms of uh, result and position in the league. So I felt like uh, when you sign as a striker in January, it's normally to have an impact and uh, and hopefully uh, an impact straight away, and at least to give a chance. And uh, of course, the first game, you know, you have to adapt to the. To the the club, the team, the way they play. So I was thinking, yeah, no, no problem at all. But after another one, so okay, two, <laughs> a third game, and maybe fourth. I don't know, four or five games. I've waited uh, on the on the bench, and I felt like uh, I was surprised. I was like, uh, why is it, did sign me if he's not to to be given a chance, uh, you know, to start one game. Uh, and I remember thinking, like, uh, wait, next one, and uh, we see after if I have to speak to the manager to to know why I'm not playing or why I'm not uh, starting again. And that game, you know, came as you know, and uh, that was a good one. <laughs> and well, it was the start of a new new adventure. You got off to the perfect start against Doncaster. Um, you actually got three goals um, that day, um, but you had quite. A few quite a lot more opportunities um were you happy with the three goals or were you disappointed that it wasn't more Jan? it's a good question i would have to, i would need to to watch again <laughs> i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember maybe the goal uh, especially i think that was uh, one at the back post uh, and uh, maybe two headers which is uh, which is yeah no no i think i was I could not be more happy than scoring a hat trick, you know, on your first start, especially after being frustrated to uh, almost thinking, uh, knocking at the door of the manager to say, uh, "Oh, what's going on? I'm not playing." So it was a big turn for me, and I felt like 
that's a big boost. And I feel like even with the fans and the, there was like that was a connection that day was for me like uh, something good will happen at, at this club and you will feel uh, good, you know, as a family and. Uh, it was it was the start of the Jan Kermigan song as well. That's I <laughs> that was the start, and that that third goal was one of my fav, favorite goals you scored. It was a brilliant header at the back post. Yeah. That that season you had a really good partnership with Lewis Graben uh, towards the end. Were you were you disappointed when he left to go to Norwich? Were you worried? Um, yes, I was. To be uh, to be honest, I was in the term of. Uh, uh, I knew and uh, we saw we could be a really good partnership, you know, up front. And I felt like uh, the way we finish uh, quite strongly, you know, the season, I felt like uh, if we could keep the, the same uh, squad and had uh, three or four good players uh, with good pedigree, uh, it could be something uh, really interesting because uh, as we, we saw, we finished the season with, uh, uh, I don't know what was the point of average, but uh, it was quite high. So, uh, it's always important to finish the season strong, uh, and and of course you come back, you are on the positives, and and you can start a good season as well. So, of course, with that that into the season, I, I honestly think that was um, the catalyst for the title winning the year. Um, did you ever imagine what was going to happen next? <laughs> <laughs> no. Got <laughs> 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 uh, Yeah. Oh, well, I, I was like, uh, I felt something great would would happen. That's why I said to you, I remember having uh, having a uh, a chat with the uh, Grabs and uh, and uh, and Cookie, uh, saying, lads, if we can keep the same group, you know, and uh, just bring a few players, I'm sure we can push for at least the playoffs and maybe maybe even more, because I could see the quality of the the players, uh, of course, the um, quality of the manager as well. Uh, was really, um, you know, in big demand of the of everybody at the club, and you know, if you want to reach something uh, uh, promotion, there is two solution. You got the, the definitely the best squad and uh, with players, maybe almost Premier League uh, standard, and of course you are better and you can win the league, or it's a lot of work and and uh, and lots of intensity and everything. So. Uh, I think we we had players who finally became Premier League players, but this time we had players who wanted to improve, to work hard, and the manager to to drive uh, every, everybody uh, to the top. Now we had a, a question from a fan, Kirk Tovey. Uh, it's on a video, so just uh, have a have a look at this. Hi, Jan and everyone. Firstly, I'd like to wish Jan a happy retirement and all the best for any future adventures that he takes on. Now your partnership with Callum Wilson was clinical and something that we don't see very often in the modern game. Is Callum Wilson one of your favourite striking partners in your career and was it something that clicked naturally or needed to be worked on in training? Uh, I think it's quite easy to, uh, I think it's crazy to 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 see and to understand uh, because basically my weakness were maybe strength and uh, and the opposite so we were complementary uh, he was you know quick running behind uh, wanted to score goals and me i love to play just a little bit more you know deep and uh, and uh, flicks pass the ball so yeah basically i think we were just uh, having different uh, qualities and uh, and we can complement each other perfectly. One of most Bournemouth fans' favourite memories of you, we've, we've all got a few favourite memories, but a lot of our favourite memories centre around that goal against Ipswich um, with Simon Francis's cross. Um, it, would you say that's your best ever goal? No. <laughs> <laughs> that better than that. Well, for Charlton, was it for Charlton? <laughs> no, no, it was in France. I, I got, I got like uh, two or three of head kicks. Uh, I scored in France, and I think there was uh, two, maybe uh, more. Definitely one better because much more difficult and uh, and really good. And another one, uh, yeah, quite quite good as well. Neil, I read somewhere that Jan used to practice scissor kicks in his back garden. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. It's not in my back, back garden, but you know the land I just told you before. 
the land in front of my parents' garden where the, the dads uh, build, a, uh, build a, a wood uh, goal. That was funny because on, on, the, on the left of the, of the goal, when you were looking at the goal, on the left there was like a hedge and a house. And on the right there were much more space, you know, and, uh, and a little road. So basically my friend was used to cross from the right. So I was doing like volleys from the right or, or over it uh, from the right. Which happened with uh, with Fano when he's, when he when he crossed? Brilliant. But well, I, I I finished sometime in the hedge uh, when I was doing my. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Were you a natural free kick taker, Jan? Um, and did you practice the free kicks a lot? Um, you like the pressure of that and the penalties? Uh, no, I would not say I practice a lot, but I really love uh, free kicks, and I feel like uh, sometimes when you are you have a difficult game and you can't really even approach, you know, the the goal. Uh, sometimes just a little foul can make a, a big a big difference because you get the that free kick, you know, close to the close to the box or even sometimes a bit further. But yeah, I think it's uh, really important. As as could be, you know, all the free kicks and. Uh, and fix, you know, from headers, and that sometimes can, you know, just be the difference in the game. In that final season, uh, you and Brett used to rotate, so sometimes he'd play, sometimes you'd play. So I've got two questions. Did that annoy you? And also, were you told why you played and why Brett played? Uh, no, it did uh, annoy me, to be fair. Uh, it's the first time I've been sent off, so it was uh, naturally uh, someone else will play in front of me. Uh, and Brett, uh, honestly, I think uh, did very well. He was good, uh, even at training. You could see he was a, a great finisher, and I think he's proved that, uh, especially at Bombo, scoring many, many goals uh, the season before. And it was just about like uh, competition. And uh, when I lost my uh, my place, I would say uh, because of my red card, I think the team still, you know, did well, of course. And, uh, and Brett was. Uh, was doing well as well, so I had just to to wait a little bit and work out as well and get my chance again. And uh, and another time I've been sick as well, and that game is called a night trick. I think it was Blackpool or something. <laughs> so I think it's just a proof of uh, uh, his quality as well. You know, to be ready when you get the chance to take it. And I think he did he did very well. And at the end, we we we've played both. You know, quite a big part in uh, lots of games as well. And and uh, I could not say I was annoyed, of course, uh, that's, that's part of football. But as I say, it's not about, I know it's difficult because you think about your individual stat and your personal uh, life. But in the same time, you are, for me, you have to think more about the, the team and uh, you want to reach something. And, and for that, I think if you don't help each other, it doesn't, it affects you negatively instead of being maybe something really positive. And uh, I think with Brett, we had something maybe more positive, like uh, uh, we had to accept one will play in front of the other one. Uh, and if it's not me, I have to be ready for the time I would be... On <laughs> the, I, <laughs> the time I would be, you know, on the pitch. So, yeah, that's just resume uh, the quality of the squad we had this season. Mm. Uh, as you could see, when even when the manager did the... Uh, 10 changes in the, in the cup, for example, we always did uh, very well and we produced some good football as well. So uh, I think that's why we won, won the league. We, we are just not only 11 players, but uh, 20 good players. <laughs> and you got 15 goals in the championship winning season. So you beat Brett by a couple as well. Um, were you both really competitive against each other in the goal scoring stakes? And would you say it's the best goal scoring season? No, because as I, as I said before, I've not been uh, always um, focused on uh, only scoring goals. I want I want just to help my team. At some time, I'm really happy when I make a, a run back and I make a great tackle as a defender. Just because uh, I think that's uh, important for my team is to to see I am here to you know as well to, to help and not only uh, getting the uh, how do you say that um, don't put the cover to you. I don't know if mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean, but when you score goals, most of the time it's because your teammates have worked out for you as well and uh, have done something to, to give you the opportunity to, to score goals. So 
uh, I like uh, making assists as much as scoring goals. And uh, and the most important at the end is uh, getting a result and, and win games. So, what was your favorite assist? Ah, that the one uh, against Birmingham. That was for, for Callum, Callum, wasn't it? Yeah, for different reasons. First, because I think it was a really difficult one in terms of uh, uh, distance, and and uh, what I like it's it's like a. Inches from being not a goal, <laughs> but at the end it's a goal because his defender is tackling, but he's just uh, there to to get the ball, and the goalkeeper is just there to get the ball. So finally, it was uh, just a perfect assist for for Callum. He did the perfect run as well, and, and uh, I think that's uh, that, that assist for me give me more uh, happiness, I would say, than some goals, especially that day where. We could have crumbled and, and just you know, being tuned down and uh, at such an important uh, uh, time of the the, the league. Uh, I think yeah, we we desperately needed to to score that goal and and that maybe change uh, the rest of the uh, history. Do you think you got better with age? Uh, better, I don't know. Maybe you take less attention to things that could be who could affect your your your, your game or your mind. Mm. And of course, it, if it uh, affects your your mind, it affects your game after. But uh, no, I think I've uh, found the, the the right managers as well, and uh, and the way we work in England is maybe a bit different well, of what I've done in in France, uh, maybe. So yeah, I felt like uh, just I've improved uh, working out, the training as well, and uh, with the, all the fa facilities, all the staff who are much bigger than in France. So it gives you more, maybe, uh, you know, those details to to get better and stronger. In you, see, you mentioned managers. It, it always looked like Eddie loved you, but did he ever get angry with you? And what about? Was he angry uh, against me? Did he ever? Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I think uh, <laughs> uh, to be to be honest, um, Eddie is. Uh, he demands a lot from his players and from his staff, from everybody at the club, and that's why the club has been there and now he's uh, you know in, in the top league. Uh, so I think that's something he didn't have to really uh, ask me too much. Giving my uh, my best was uh, always, uh, I think, the, the case. Uh, sometimes you're not good, but uh, you always, uh, I think, I always give my, my best on the pitch. My favourite moment, Jan, was the free kick you scored against Brighton. Because watching that game, I thought, this is a game we, we need to win, but we're never going to score. And then yeah. you casually strode up and s s hit some free kick. Do you want to talk us through that moment? Uh, yeah, I had the same feeling, to be fair. I think we were at the turn of the season where, uh, I would say, on the paper, that was maybe the biggest game. Uh, we 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 had to play uh, until the end. Uh, away, Brighton is never easy. And uh, was the game on Sky? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. So always, yeah. Even the game on Sky always a bit different. So a bit more pressure on us. And uh, we didn't play too well, if I remember. And we struggled to really create chances and. Uh, and we maybe felt like, uh, oh, we're never going to score a goal. Maybe not concede, but not scoring. So, and we we were de desperate to win, uh, especially at the, this period of uh, the season. Uh, and as I said just before, we we spoke about that. You know, the free kick could be the solution. And uh, when we had that free kick, I felt like you you have to score because we we don't have any occasion, and uh, and we need to to we were desperate to win. So I felt like uh, I had uh, maybe a big, uh, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, it could be the different that free kick. So I just tried to concentrate as much as I can, and uh, and uh, that was funny because there was Matti uh, Madrici was uh, bes beside me, and we spoke just before, and uh, and uh, that was another part of uh, the quality of the, the the team and the squad because when we spoke, it felt like. Uh, it was maybe more for left-footed because it was on a bit on the right, but in the same time, he just pushed me to say like, "You're gonna come on, Yanni. Come on, Yanni. You're gonna score." And that's why when I scored, he jumped on me again. 
like a, yeah. like Ipswich. He was used to to grab me and try to kill me on the floor. <laughs> so yeah, he just uh, completely uh, explode and, uh, and I quite enjoyed that. Got a question here from Jamie that's been submitted. Um, so can you describe the feeling um, you had when that full time whistle went against Bolton? Uh, I was almost crying to be fair. And, and, uh, and that was funny because uh, I've been sub, uh, I don't remember, maybe 80th minute or something like that. So I could watch, you know, the game uh, on, uh, on the sideline, the, the, the end. And for me, uh, it was a long 10 minutes or 15, I don't remember exactly, but that was like, uh, you couldn't be more happy. And uh, I quite appreciate, to be fair, to be out of the, the, the pitch at that time for just... Uh, uh, enjoying, you know, the, the atmosphere and uh, just waiting for the whistle. And uh, I was just uh, crying more inside, maybe, but I had some tears uh, coming. And uh, I was, uh, I don't even remember if I was really completely celebrating in the dressing room after the game because I was so, uh, it was like uh, the end of a long journey mm -hmm. and getting the, the dream, you know, the dream come true. And, uh, I was well, just so happy inside, and at the same time, some people could see me like uh, feeling sad, but it was not. Mm. How special was it to win the title at Charlton? Uh, that was something. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember when I saw the the pictures at the beginning of the season. I felt like, uh, why why Charlton away for the last game? That means something for me. It's gonna happen something, <laughs> but I couldn't, of course, e e expect uh, what fin finally happened. I could. It's, mm. I think. I think even in a in a in a book, it would not be possible to write exactly what happened at the end. Uh, Chat on the way, winning. You know, being promoted, winning the league at the last minute. With what happened at Watford and Chef Wednesday was like. A, yeah, he looks like he come from a movie. You know what I mean. Mm. Well, the um, after we won, we obviously had the bus parade on the beach, and we've got a question from Simon. He said, "Do you remember the bus parade on the beach?" Because when we asked Brett Pittman, he said, "Jan Kerman, <laughs> he said he won't remember it." I, 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 I do, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> I, do I, I was just, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I remember it was just a, a massive massive day, of, just something you can't really believe. But uh, and I was quite impressed by the people on the beach. I was uh, wow. Uh, at this time, I remember I felt like uh, I won the title at uh, Munich or something. You know, the big club you see on TV uh, mm. uh, with the parade and uh, so many people in the street. And uh, I couldn't imagine it would be that moment uh, when we when we drove to the to the beach. It was uh, so impressive. But uh, yeah, we had a, a nice uh, night out before, <laughs> and uh, we quite enjoyed the the promotion. And what, and what, what, what were you drinking? Because I want to buy some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's maybe something I don't remember exactly, but I would say champagne or stuff like that. Yeah, good. Very good. Yeah. When uh, when the season, uh, the pre-season was in in progress for the the Premier League, uh, were you were you spoken to by Eddie about your role within the team in the Premier League, or or was it a surprise when uh, you were left out for that first game against Villa? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh... Uh, I would say Eddie is not the kind of manager who tell you like uh, uh, you will be my uh, striker next season with the uh, Callum no Prem or something like that. So it was for me just a question about being uh, ready for the season, new season, of course, a higher level. Uh, and in the same time, I was quite confident to get a chance because, uh, of course, I, I felt like I had a, a big part in the, in the promotion. So I might be. Um, not not reward because you in football it's not like that. But I felt like maybe I would have a chance. And uh, when he told me at the end of the season, like uh, we will not be where we are without without you, without me signing you a year ago, 
Mm -hmm. I felt like it was a big uh, uh, organize, organizing from uh, from uh, yeah. from him, and and I felt like uh, yeah, I should have a chance, and after I would have uh, I would have to take it, and of course to prove I can play play a part in Prem, but uh, it didn't happen like uh, I wished. But as I say, it's football. Looking back. Um... Is there anything, or what do you feel that you could have done differently, Jan, um, if anything, to get more game time? Uh, you can always do something different and, and surely better. Uh, I had, uh, I had, unfortunately, I had uh, an injury at training uh, with uh, with Tommy. Uh, we had, uh, I had a. Uh, I received a tackle where I got a little bit injured on my Achilles. And the last game of season of preseason, I think we played middles of Pro at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was limping, so I had to come off after 20 minutes. And uh, of course, I would not say it would have changed um, uh, the Gaffer decision to start me or not. I don't think. But uh, anyway, it was not uh, the, the best time to get injured and, uh, and to miss the last game, you know, to get ready for uh, the opening, uh, opening game of season. So I was, of course, disappointed, uh, and at the end, uh, the, no, of course, uh, I, 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 the last week, the week before Villa, uh, I was thinking if you don't play the first game or first two or three games, uh, they might bring another striker, or maybe two. Uh, they will maybe come from Premier League clubs, as you know uh, what it, it means, a uh, big. Uh, Big money and big stuff like that, so you will be maybe uh, fourth or, or fifth uh, forward. So I felt like you have to, you maybe will get two or three chances, no more, if you do well with Callum and you and you prove you can still be a good partnership in Premier League. Maybe you will get more uh, more game time, you know. And and uh, not not I was not even thinking like you're gonna start every game in the Prem. It was not my. Uh, uh, I was. Um, clever enough to, to know, you know, it would be, not be that easy. Uh, but at least I wanted to have a, a go and, uh, and a chance. So, so when I saw I was not, uh, he, he, he called me uh, before the game to say you will not start uh, on Saturday. So I was uh, really disappointed, but I felt like, okay, so he might get some changes and, and maybe we would not start with the same team. Okay. But the biggest disappointment for me was when he, when I saw on Friday when we do set pieces and stuff like that, that I was only one from the I would say the, the promotion team to be out of the starting eleven, and and this this day I felt like it was a uh, like uh, really painful because yeah. I felt like my dream was over already. I was thinking as because I as I said before I need to start the first two or three games to get a chance and uh, not starting the first one. When we finally brought no nobody, I would say in terms of, uh, uh, I think we we brought um, uh, Josh King. Just yeah. yeah, just Josh King. I think that was the only one. Eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. at this time that was the only one. Mm -hmm. So I was I was upset because, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, you know, Kingy was playing a Blackburn. He, he didn't like score many goals that season, and. Uh, and he was not from Premier League, so I felt like we finished first in the league. Uh, I did well with Callum, and uh, I was really, uh, yeah, upset and even more not starting in front of uh, Kingy, uh, because as I said before, I was thinking now nah, they're going to bring another striker. It would be even tougher for me to 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 play. So that night I had a really bad night, like uh, awful. Uh, I was almost, I was yeah, almost crying inside, thinking uh, your dream is over. I, I felt even betrayed, like, uh, oh, no, it's not possible. What, what can the, the happen? And, uh, and at the end, it, it didn't uh, help me because the, 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 the day after on Saturday, uh, I was knackered before to even come to the game. I was, like, uh, completely drained. My, my legs were shaky, you know, and uh, I felt tired. My back sore and, you know, the kind of uh, body you feel when you, you've had a, a really awful night. Mm. And, and what happened happened is uh, Kingi was maybe knackered after uh, forty or sixty minutes, and I had to come to come. No, I think I come on after fifty minutes or fifty-five minutes, and I was like really bad physically. I was uh, it was not about fitness. 
because uh, if I had played the game in a good, you know, with a good uh, mind and stuff like that, it would have been maybe better. But that day I felt like so, like at, out of my body. Mm. Because, uh, yeah, for me, the, the dream, dream was, was over. And, uh, and finally, it didn't help me because if I had uh, a good game that day, I might have maybe started the, the following one. Yeah. But I couldn't control my body. And my body was uh, stiff and, uh, and my head was gone as well. So I had a, a bad game. Uh, not, not, not crazy. Like, uh, I didn't do anything wrong, you know, but uh, I felt like out of pace. And uh, I remember losing like two balls uh, where the guy arrived, like, uh, I was a truck and he was uh, a Ferrari, you know, like, <laughs> and I think that uh, completely killed me. And, but that was not really me, you know. So, so yeah, I was upset because uh, I felt like after this game, I was uh, already right off before to even have a chance. And, mm. and that's my biggest dis disappointment because mm. as, as I said now if I look at the, the, the lads they're all playing in Premier League and I can see uh, they play against defender I play against in Championship where I've done well so I'm sure I could have done uh, I could have done something and I could have uh, had a, a part to play in a, in a team uh, okay. especially doing what I've done at Reading two years after yeah. I think I was not done and, and that's uh that's my only regret, I would say, at Bournemouth. Did you talk that through with Eddie? Uh, yeah, I spoke to him uh, few, maybe two or three weeks ago. Uh, we had a little chat, and as I said to him, it's not, uh, it's not personal, you know. It's, I was uh, even uh, not happy with myself. Uh, and at the same time, I said to him, uh, I was really here, upset, and... Uh, almost angry uh, against him, but it's not like something you stay in, in my mind. And uh, in my mind, yes, but I mean, uh, I have nothing to, to, to tell him. Uh, you know, we had a good chat and we had a, a good relationship, no problem at all. Mm. I had to, to accept that. And uh, as I said to him, he proved, he proved like uh, he, he didn't take a bad decision because Kingi uh, has done well since, since then. I think he's done uh, uh, yeah, very well. And you could see he had, uh, you know, quality. Uh, so, so yeah, it's not. Uh, it's just a regret for myself, and uh, and of course, after what I've done in uh, in championship, I, I felt like I, I deserved. Mm. It's tough for me now to say I've not started a game in the prem. That's uh, mm. we were, we want we all wanted you to start. We all yeah, to really. I think we all did, and um, <laughs> we we was I think we were all pretty disappointed that you went to Reading halfway through that first season. Um, you had a lot of clubs actually interested in you. What made you choose Reading? Uh, that was quite simple, you know. If I left Bournemouth, it was for a London club, just because you know it was another move. Uh, I didn't want to go up north, and it was back to London or or maybe stay at Reading, but I didn't want to go too far. It's fair to say when you got there, Jan, um, it was a very turbulent time. They actually changed managers three times that season. Um, and you was brought in by McDermott, weren't you? Brian McDermott? Yeah. 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 Um, they also had a shake-up in ownership. Um, did you think at any point that it was a mistake going to Reading? And do you wish that you stayed at AFCB at any time? Um, the thing is, uh, I had the same feeling as uh, I had at Charlton in terms of uh, I was really well and uh, I felt very good at uh, at Bournemouth with, uh, as I said, the club, uh, family club, uh, the manager, no problem at all, the players and the fans. So I wanted to stay, but the fact is I would not have played. So, so I couldn't say, yeah, you play in the Prem, but you don't really play. You just... Uh, come on for a few minutes sometimes mm. and uh, at my age and my uh, I just wanted to play so I felt like I, I still had uh, no legs and I couldn't do a good job in the uh, championship so I felt like do you prefer to play a part in a club in championship or just uh, sit on the bench in Premier League and uh, watching your teammates uh, uh, you know realizing that dream and you just being uh, I said that in a, another interview for me it was like when you you got a big, uh, big present, mm. and all your teammates can play with the <laughs> the toy, but not you. <laughs> and you just watch them playing with the the thing you've uh, like uh, achieved together. That was uh, 
really, really difficult. So I think I had yeah. to I had to move on. I just uh, it would have been too difficult to to do the the full season watching my my teammates and just uh, feeling like uh, we're not involved really. That second season, um, you was quite prolific um, for them in front of goal. Um, you got them to the playoff semi-final as well, didn't you? And you scored, was it against Fulham in the semi-final? Yeah. Um, what would you say from your experience um, that you got at AFCB um, helped that year? Uh, yeah, that's a good question because when I, um, when I signed for Reading, uh, I had basically, uh, you know, my uh, big disappointment not playing in the Prem. Mm. Uh, I was not much fit because I didn't play. So I had to get back to fitness. I had to uh, recover from my disappointment and uh, get back to confidence as well. So the, that, that end of season was quite difficult, uh, even with reading, because we, we didn't play we didn't play well. Uh, we were struggling in the league. So I was thinking, oh, that's not good. But the following one, uh, I think there was a big... Uh, big turn for me in my uh, uh, reading career, I would say, it was the signing of uh, the manager, Yap Stam, mm-hmm. which was uh, yeah, a great, great guy and great manager, with, uh, of course, a big experience as a player, so someone you want to hear and to, to listen. Uh, and uh, the big change for me is, um, for the first time, I was uh, the, the number nine, and not the the one who play behind the striker. I was uh, the only striker, and uh, and I play off front on my own. So it was a bit uh, a big ask for me because, as I said before, I'm not uh, selfish. So as a striker, when you play off front on your own, you have to be sometimes a little bit more selfish and uh, think about the, the goals uh, because you are here to score goals, and uh, sometimes you you have to forget, you know, about the. Uh, doing maybe some some I would not say defensive work, but you have to focus a bit more on uh, finishing the the, um, the action uh, and be in the box. Mm-hmm. So I had to adapt my game a little bit, uh, and finally it happened very well for me, and that was my best season in terms of uh, goal, which is uh, crazy. <laughs> Which which of your teammates did you stay closest to as, as friends, and did any of them try and speak French to you? Uh, that, uh, that's you know why that's funny, because uh, we had such a, a great team, a great everything. Uh, I had no 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 problem with any players, but uh, I've been I've stayed closer with the players at Charlton and uh, even Reading after, where we got like a WhatsApp group still uh, together. And uh, it's like, a, yeah, bon move. I didn't have a really one uh, proper friend or because same, you know, they were promoted from League One. Yeah. Uh, players were really close. Some, some, some were really, really close, which was good, yeah, no problem. Uh, and for me, uh, yeah, I didn't have one like uh, you see outside the outside the, the training ground or the games, you know, for dinner. Or, or I had a good relationship with uh, everyone. Mm-hmm. But I had no really like a uh, big friend. I still got uh, some uh, message sometimes with uh, with Tommy Elphick or, or or Matt Ritchie, or but not the same uh, yeah, as a uh, Charlton and, and Reading, mm-hmm. which is crazy because we had a really good uh, you know season and relationship. But so you you went back to France. When you went back to France uh, to play, did you notice a, a lot of changes in French football, or or was it uh, as you remembered it? Uh, I, I don't. I don't really know. To be fair, um, it's, it's weird because I, I don't watch too too much football on TV. I just uh, we had uh, like a, a TV show on Sunday where you can see all the goals and uh, they talk about the uh, football, you know, of the weekend. But uh, the rest of the time, I just watch sometimes with Champions League games or or international games, but not not many. You're you're also known as a, a man who loves food and wine, as most French people do. Did you teach Mark Pugh how to cook, or are there any other players that you've influenced at Bournemouth? <laughs> no, no, but I've seen uh, I, I've seen some of uh, his video every day, like uh, cooking, uh, cooking, and sometimes I've seen with a glass of wine, which is which is good. Uh, but yeah, Sinan is uh, really busy with the with the food. Maybe too 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 much for me. <laughs> <laughs> too, too much for me. Yeah. 
Now, <laughs> now, now that you've retired, um, so you were, you were always a very intelligent footballer. Do you think you will take that intelligence and become a coach or a manager, or what's your plan? Uh, not not really. To be fair, I, I would like to. Uh, that's what I, what I'm doing now. Uh, to do something a little bit different of football. I still love football, of course, and uh, but the 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 thing is, um, I've had a few possibilities of uh, uh, conversion and do uh, something in the clubs I've played for. Uh, but the, the the fact is, uh, I, you know, I've been. Um, Occupied for many, many, many time uh, for the weekends because of football, of course, and now I want to enjoy a little bit more time with my family. So most of the the work in football are, uh, are on the weekends, and uh, I'm not ready to do it now because I want you know, just to see my my kids and and my family, my wife, and and just enjoy yeah, my time with my family. But Great. but my son is playing football, and I. I uh, kind of teach him, you know. I follow him, and uh, and I help the club to to have a to have a coach. <laughs> okay. Do you ever find yourself humming that um, chant that we have for you? Yeah, yeah. Of course, I do. I do. Uh, I'm missing it, to be fair. I would love to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. If you want to come come over and uh, have a song. <laughs> Sing in the garden. We, we had a question yeah. from... Uh, we had a question in from a fan, Blazers for Goalposts, who asked, if you were spending the rest of your life on a desert island, which member of the Bournemouth squad from that season would go with you? Wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a really difficult question. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. As I said before, you know, I didn't have one one friend, you know, like a best friend. Uh, so I would say, without saying a name, I would say one who like uh, food and wine. So it might be my pew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it would have to be a little bit less um, serious on the food, you know. Sometimes you can uh, have a little bit more fun because it's too much on the veg and, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a f another food question for you. We've got a, a one fan who, who lives in Brittany. He lives close to you. Uh, he's a lovely old man. And he wants to know, when you eat galette sausage, do you have it with moutard or do you have it with ketchup? Um. I could say both, but definitely you need mutab. Good answer. Very good. Oh, one other thing, yeah. Jan. You played for the Brittany national team. Did you ever wish you played for the French national team? Uh, yeah, I do. I do when I was younger. After, you have to, uh, to be honest with yourself and uh, see it's not possible. But when I was young uh, and I started to play football and I first signed for... For Ren, my, my aim, of course, was to, to play at the highest level. So when you consider the highest level is uh, your national team, I think yeah, it was uh, normal normal to, to think about it. But after, of course, it's uh, it's uh, not uh, that easy, I would say, and especially when you arrive that that late. But I played mm -hmm. with uh, with uh, Olivier Giroud in mm -hmm. France. Mm -hmm. So I know him well. He played with me at, at, at Grenoble. He was a bit younger. So mm. I was at the time a little bit in front of him. So he had to play and to, to leave for all the clubs. And uh, and uh, you could see now where he is. So so sometimes you, you never know. So you, you, taught him, you taught him everything you knew? <laughs> Maybe, but no, but I remember we used to, to enjoy fin doing finishing, you know, after training. Mm. Uh, for sure, doing volleys and... Uh, even yeah, even over head kicks and stuff like that. But we used to work uh, together in front of goal. Neil, any last questions? No, no. I just wanted to say thank you to Jan because I think um, Eddie was right. We would not have got into the Premier League without you. Um, and you, you, you gave us some amazing moments. You're my little boy's uh, favourite player. He wanted me to tell you that, that Louis. He, he, you will always be his favourite. Ah. And you, you know, you were superb. So thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, uh, thank you. Pleasure. I, Always. I, 
I think, yeah, and it's been a real pleasure to have you on there. Um, all the Bournemouth fans, um, like Neil, like Craig, like me, I think we all loved you, loved having you at the club and, and realised what a massive contribution you made. So thanks for that. Um, we had Brett Pittman on with us last week, Steve Fletcher up at the weekend, you today. I mean, three the three of you have been all great players for us, so we're very grateful. Thank you. I would definitely come back one day to watch a game and and feel uh, the atmosphere again and say say hi to lots of people. No, and uh, really, you you are truly much, much loved and uh, we will never forget you for the bus ride, if nothing else. <laughs> 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 thanks, thanks, Neil. Thanks, Craig, as well, for joining okay. us and for your input today. It's been great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, if you've enjoyed this video, then please do subscribe because there is more content to come over the next couple of weeks and a bit before the football season starts again. And that includes yet another live show this weekend. If you're looking for standout players for the 1980s, then don't forget to tune in at 8 p.m. on the Sunday night for one of the club's most infamous natural talents. We'll reveal all on Twitter and Facebook tomorrow. But for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Let's go!